Welcome back to Modern Homestead Alaska. Today we are working on the actual pantry. As part of our pantry series, we built out this first half of this beautiful pantry and I wanna show it to you. And I wanna explain kind of some things we did here. We just finished the second half of the pantry last night. There's nothing over there, I'm still pulling tape. But as everything is going on, inflation is rising and everyone is trying to learn and stock maybe for the first time or to get some inspiration, I want to show you a pantry from scratch, like a blank wall to a pantry in this series, how we got here. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around for a little bit. Welcome to our vlog. If you're new around here, we're the Milnes family. We just moved to Alaska in July. We're building a modern homestead outside of Wasilla, Alaska. That's my awesome husband, Aaron. I am Jessica, a stay-at-home wife and mom. And our second son, Caleb, decided to come with us along with our daughter, Cody Ann, and the youngest of our family, Wyatt. We brought our two dogs, Tipper and Daisy, and got a new addition, the Alaska dog, Roberto. Clearly this was recorded a while ago, but let's get into how I had started. We start today on one of my anticipated to be one of my favorite projects in the house. This room was built specifically for me by Erin. It was added to the house. So this room and the kitchen in my dreams are my two favorite rooms in the house. We're only gonna get half of it done today. Just the pantry this counter height is going to be 12 foot long so that kind of shows you the ceilings are nine foot so 12 foot by nine foot by 24 inches deep is the size of this chunk of the pantry so it is massive in comparison to most standard pantry okay the first thing we are laying out is where we want the panels to go along the wall Next, we measured and started installing what essentially is the piece that will hold the small closet. I put it directly across, as you can see, from the washer and dryer, so when clothes need to be hung. But it also makes a great place to anchor the pantry shelves by putting these supports and the pull in. It helps hold everything in place as we start to build out the remainder of the pantry. So that is what we're working on right here. Okay, the next step that we moved on to was the support for that live edge counter height that's going to come in next. It was so important that we found all of the studs on the wall and that we anchored the support into each stud because not only would it be holding that counter height, but the pantry shelving that goes on top of it also bears all the weight. And the main thing that is actually holding the weight of the upper part of the pantry is that back board and the size of screws that we use to anchor into the stud. So this step took a while, but it was so important that the boys and I got it right. Next, we laid out where we wanted the legs to go. And what was important about the legs is the pantry shelves that go directly above it. I want that uniform look when it is finished for those lines to line up. We put in the slab, this live edge piece of wood that Cody had actually spent most of the day sanding. And then we needed to oil the slab before we put the pantry on top. The next thing we did after oiling the slab was design and lay out, start cutting the pieces for the pantry shelves. What we are deciding here and messing with is a bunch of jars. So I am trying to decide ahead of time because my shelves are permanent. They don't move up and down or adjust. And I had to decide what I was putting on each shelf. I know kind of how many of each of the jars that I have and what I had planned on storing on this side of the pantry. But if you're going to do a build like this, it is so important that you know what you're putting in there. Otherwise, I would suggest just using standard shelf dimensions or getting the shelving like we do later 
on the other side of the pantry where you can adjust the height of the different shelves. So that is what we're working on here. Something I like to mention, even though we're taking our time to make sure everything is level and straight, it's gonna be pretty, we are making sure that we are drilling each one of these supports into the studs of that back wall. This shelving is going to be holding a ton of canning jars and weight, so it's important that it can withstand that. The next day, I started taping off and painting the pantry out and touching up the walls and doing what needed to be done. We ended up putting this little shelf over that rod and our thoughts were everyone walks in that door and tosses hats and gloves and those sort of things down. So we went ahead and added that. This first bay that has the plug is for things like crock pots or things that I might want to cook and I don't wanna take up the kitchen countertop space that might take a while, so we have that there. And then I have a very large shelf uh, on top that's about 24 inches in case I needed to store something tall. The rest of them are two that make each other. The next one is going to be a bay for a microwave. We haven't had a microwave since July and we just recently, long after I had built this, got the actual microwave um, and the only reason we did is it uses so much propane and we have to haul that in order to heat something up in the oven really quickly so we did end up with a microwave I'm going to add trim pieces and then what I was actually talking about is the earthquake bars and I will actually show you those in just a second Okay, in this clip, what I am showing you is the installation of what we are calling earthquake bars. These are intended to prevent the jars from tipping off in the smaller earthquakes that we get quite frequently in this part of Alaska. These, of course, would not hold back like a six or a seven, a massive earthquake around here, but they would stop the jars from falling off in something small. To install the earthquake bars is fairly simple. I cut some pieces of trim on the end caps and then nailed it into the pantry as I went along. I did paint them in chalkboard paint so that when I have rows of similar things, I can actually write on the, the earthquake bar and be able to know what is in that row. I also did chalk paint in the baskets that are going above on the top shelf. So I could write on the front of those what's in those baskets and be able to keep myself organized. Well, this is it. This is the finished product at the time and it is still very similar. However, we've finished out the rest of the room. And keep in mind when this was built, we had no closets, not one closet bar in the rest of the house. This was one of the earlier projects that we had to work on and it came out lovely, I believe. And now that the room is completely finished and I can't wait to show you that, it is wonderful. I have an overflow of space in this room and I can't wait to get to using this pantry. Okay, now that you've seen us build it, I want to talk about why we take time building and didn't jump right into the other half. And we needed to live with it for a little bit to see what spacing we needed, what shelving we needed on the other side. And because the whole pantry is custom to me, built by us, I wanted to make sure things were fitting where they needed to fit. So some of the issues I ran into is there's a bunch of like honey and peanut butter here, but it's preventing like my spice jars from being fully filling this rack. So I need some place for that to go. Um, let's see, we got the microwave, but see like there's kind of things stacked around it. 
that I needed a little taller shelves. Some of the spices aren't fitting because there's other things tucked in here that I would like to go someplace else. So we did correct these things, but I think I said earlier, I'm still pulling tape. Like at 10 o'clock last night, the second half of the pantry had touch up paint going on and those sort of things. So I'm gonna start moving stuff around. And in the next pantry video, I'm gonna show you stock. And then I'm gonna show you the build of the second half and kind of how that ends up. So if that is something you're interested in, stick around the channel by subscribing and ringing the bell. And then let's get into this pantry series. Let's work together, fill our pantries, whether it be your first time or you're just looking for inspiration. We invite you to stick around the channel for a little bit. We'll see you in the next one.